Vámonos. Hey guys, and welcome back on board Agape. Today we're super excited because we're going to be installing four new Xantrex 125 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. This is going to be a huge upgrade on board from our old AGMs. So let's go ahead and take a look at exactly what we'll install. A couple of the key features on the Xantrex battery are its built-in BMS, or battery management system. Not only does this enable it to be Bluetooth so that you can view all the relevant data from your smartphone or tablet, but it also helps protect the battery from things like high voltage, low voltage, high or low temp, and short circuit. One of my favorite features of this particular battery is the built-in 10% reserve. So the battery will disconnect itself once it drops below 90% capacity to help protect it. And you actually manually have to go and press a button on the top to turn it back on to use that remaining 10%. So this ensures that you know before you actually damage the battery. I think that's a great feature, especially for people who are gonna install these and won't be aboard to actively manage the system at all times. One of my favorite things about these lithium batteries is the size and weight. These four batteries represent 500 amp hours at just over 130 pounds. One of our old AGMs would weigh 165 pounds and would only give us 120 usable amp hours. So right there, the space and weight savings is huge. It allows us to put these just about anywhere in the boat where our old AGMs, because of their size and weight, were pretty much stuck to live in the bilge next to the engine. So another great thing about the Xantrex batteries and what sets them apart is the capacity in the same footprint. Most of the competition will have a 100 amp hour battery where the Xantrex in the same space manages to fit 125 amp hours. So 25% more capacity in the same space. But I'm like a kid on Christmas morning and you can review all of the stats and specifics of these batteries on the Xantrex website right now. I can't wait to get these installed. So let's go see where we're gonna do it. So we chose to install the batteries in this locker in the aft cabin because it's the shortest run from our solar charge controllers, which currently live in here, the inverter charger that's just in front of us at the nav table, and the start battery and alternator, which is just below us. So I'll clean out this locker real quick, and then we'll go ahead and start placing the batteries. So as with every installation, each is a little bit different. For example, for us, we will not be relying on the alternator from the engine to charge the lithium batteries. Instead, we believe that we have enough solar to manage the system perfectly. I found it really helpful to read all of the literature on these batteries completely through and then draw out a wiring diagram that's specific to Agape. So this includes all of our current charging system and how we're gonna install these batteries. I've already dry fitted everything just to make sure. We've already made up our wires. It's really important that when you're making these up that they're the exact right size. From positive to positive, also your positive cables from the batteries to whatever your main breaker switch or positive bus bar is. Then we dry fit the batteries in the location that we chose to install them. The only thing that we're lacking right now to install these batteries is a class T fuse. We're in a really remote island and the only thing that we could get was an ANL style fuse. As soon as we can, we'll be replacing these for the class T style. So these batteries can only be run in parallel. We went ahead during the dry fit and made a very high tech box to house the remote on off for these batteries. It's custom, hit us up if you wanna order one. So let's go ahead and get these into the compartment and we'll go step by step how we're wiring them. I love how light these are. To get 125 usable amp hours out of our other battery, we had to have a block and tackle to lift it. These we can like, yeah, they're heavy, but they're only 33 pounds. Cool. So that's our four batteries, and now we're gonna get ready to wire them up. This locker is really convenient because we already have a positive bus bar and a negative bus bar here. We rewired them with four aught cable so that it's totally overkill for any of the charging or draws that will come off of these batteries, but it is also gonna help with any voltage drop. So we're gonna go ahead and work backwards, and I'm gonna start with the negative side, and we're gonna put a negative bus bar in, and then wire all the negative together. So this will be our main negative bus bar, and this will connect the four batteries down to the link 10 shunt, and then to the main negative bus bar for the boat. That way we can monitor everything that comes in and out of these batteries, and we'll have them wired in parallel, so two and two. So now with the negative side all wired up, 
And again, the batteries are still going to be turned off at this point. We're gonna go ahead and start wiring up our positive side. It's really important that you try to keep the wire runs as equal as possible. We're gonna go ahead and install a master on off switch for the batteries here. It'll be connected to the two fuses here. And then the other end of it will be connected to the main positive bus bar. That will enable us to completely turn off and isolate the lithium from the entire system just after the fuses. All right, now we'll install the fuses. And the next one. So now we're gonna go ahead and hook up the positive side. We're gonna hook up the two batteries in parallel using these wishbones. And then these two longer cables will go from each bank of batteries to the fuses and the on and off switch. So we'll go ahead and hook those up and then we're almost done with the install. So again, we'll be using a &L type fuses here because that's all that we can get because we're in a pretty remote location. But as soon as we can, we'll be replacing these with class T fuses. That's what's required for the lithium batteries. So now the installation or the bulk of it is complete. We have our four batteries wired in parallel, two and two. They come up through the positive cables or negative cables to fuses, then to a master on off switch, and then down to the rest of the system. Since the on off switches for these batteries, at least two of them are covered up by the DC uh, negative cables. We're gonna install the remote on off cables up on this side wall up here in our very handy, fancy Tupperware container. So we're gonna go ahead and run these cables. Each one has a simple four pin connector that connects right to the top of the batteries. That enables us to remotely turn off and on the batteries as well as see when they're charging or when they're discharging. All right, so now everything's wired, everything's torqued down and we're ready to go ahead and turn these batteries on. I've already programmed our solar controller uh, to meet the specifications of these batteries. So we'll use the remote on off switch up on this side wall. So there's our first two batteries and our second two. All right, so the lithium batteries are installed. They are on. Okay, so before we actually turn these on and connect them to the rest of the system, we're just gonna double check that all of the batteries are functioning properly. So we're gonna go ahead and use the Xantrex battery app and go one battery at a time. So all of the batteries are functioning properly and we can go ahead and connect these to the rest of the system. Now we have lights and we'll go ahead and connect these to the solar charge controllers and you'll start to see the lights flash indicating that they're being charged. Cool, so now the physical installation is complete. The batteries are all wired up and they're turned on, but a critical last step is to make sure that the batteries are top and bottom balanced. To do this, we'll fully charge the batteries, fully discharge the batteries until they disconnect and fully charge them again. This makes sure that the individual cells are all balanced as well as each one of the individual batteries. To do this, we can go ahead and connect our tablet via the Bluetooth app to our charger inverter. And under settings, we can change from our old AGMs to the new lithium. So now that we've adjusted the charge parameters for lithium, we can use the generator to fully charge the batteries and then some high load appliances like hair dryers and heat guns to discharge them before bringing them all the way back up to 100%. This will ensure that they've been properly bottom and top balanced. So with the installation complete, Agape has gained over 70 amp hours of usable power while shedding 350 pounds. It's incredible how Xantrex can fit so much power into such a small footprint. Not only that, but these batteries charge more efficiently and faster than our old AGMs with none of the dangerous off-gassing. They also are gonna last eight to 10 times as long as our old AGMs, meaning that these are probably gonna be the last batteries that Agape ever sees. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video as much as we'll enjoy these new lithium batteries. And thanks for following along as we continue to explore the world, powered by Xantrex.